Word up, we're here with Matthew Huber at Algae Research and Supply, one of the first people I ever interacted with in the phycology space. There isn't as many people in the phycology space as there is in the mycology space. Um, so we're here, we're, we've been checking out the lab, a lot of really cool stuff going, a lot of really uh, innovative procedures and systems that I haven't seen before. Um, but Matthew was sharing with us his vision and mission statement with Algae Research and Supply, and I thought it'd be great if he shared it with you guys. Oh, awesome, thanks. First of all, it's great to see you here. You are much cooler than than I ever will be, and my staff is super excited to have you here. So uh, it's, a, it's an honor to meet you. But um, uh, the reason that, that I'm here and the reason we started the company to begin with is because we have a giant problem on our hands that the next generation of, uh, of humans it has to deal with directly, and that's that we're putting a lot more CO2 in the atmosphere than um, should be there, and it's warming the planet up. So. Um, I know a lot about algae, and one of the really amazing things about algae is it fixes a lot of CO2 from the atmosphere and from seawater. So um, what I'm trying to do with the company is very focused. I want to give what I know about photosynthesis in microalgae because of its amazing ability to remove CO2 um, from the biosphere. Um, and I want to put that in the hands of our next generation. Why? Because this is a tool, maybe not the old, maybe not the best tool, maybe not the only tool, but it's a tool that they can wield absolutely to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. So that's why we're here. We want the next generation of scientists and engineers, we gotta have engineers as well, <laughs> um, to, to be able to use algae as a tool to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. That's why we're here. So that's why I exist. Incredible, and I found Matthew while I was studying permaculture. So as he says, it's a tool, it may not be like the thing. Um, just as I think a lot of people say mushrooms are gonna save the world. I don't think that it's just mushrooms. I don't think it's just algae. I think in bringing all these things together and mimicking the way that nature creates these dynamic ecosystems, uh, we can add our unique human twist and bring this to the next level, so. Well, thank sir. you. Yeah, yeah. Houston, the Salt Lake is going down because of how much urbanization is happening around there. Yeah. I wonder about like efficacy for breeding them. To keep up with industry, you need a you need a giant bottle. But a good friend of mine is the um, is the Lorax for the Great Salt Lake. Her name is Jamie. I'm not wearing the shorts. Um, but yeah, we have a, a partner brand in Cal in LA. Um, you guys are crushing like doing the partnerships and branding stuff. That's pretty cool. It's all about community. It's all about like decentralizing and like making sure that there's a network um, and not putting everything in one spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're here for your, your algae. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do that again. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Are you looking at doing the hematococcus thing? Yes, yes. I've been really wanting to emphasize that a little bit more. I have a culture that I pulled out of a bird bath in my front of my house. Uh, Was it? Did it, <laughs> it, house? it though? You have grazers? Grazers. Grazers will little, mess it up. What, like little rotifers and things like that? Yeah, yeah, they'll eat the hematococcus. Oh, no, no. Um, I was able to isolate it. We have a red one and a green one. Oh, I would like Same to help both of them. Yes. Um, I was able to isolate it after I took the Bigelow class. Nice. Yeah. Oh, good for you. So nice. The, that, was a, that was like superpowers. Well, should the lab, just turn the label the backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. There we go. But yeah, that was, uh, that was like superpowers, honestly. Yeah? Yeah, they showed me how to like isolate pure culture from sea, concentrated seawater. Stick on their nose and it just smell really deep. Yeah, it definitely smells oystery. It smells like low tide. Yeah, yeah. that's like my favorite smell. Yeah. It turns out there's this there's this fellow named Lovejoy, and the, the 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 stuff that comes off there is a um, it's a sulfur compound. So uh, those the sulfur compounds, they are the thing that help to um, form clouds. Mm -hmm. So Whoa. this and Cloud cedars. oh, can you grab the um. The uh, uh, Emiliana Huxley. One so, of the one of the students that was in the class with me, that was their like specialty was like cloud seeding algae or something like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so this is the same stuff. So basically, what this and this one is this is one it's, it's a coccolithophore called Emiliana Huxley, um, which we actually got from Bigelow. Okay, okay. Um, and and this one, uh, you can see it's white compared to the green. This is going to absorb a lot of photons mm -hmm. and warm the water up. Yeah. This one's going to reflect a lot of light and warm a, and warm the water up less. Mm -hmm. And this one also, 
That's like a chalk, look at a chalk less. producing. Species. Yeah, the, the white cliffs of Dover are mm -hmm. literally um, coccolithophores. Mm -hmm. So um, what this guy, and they called it the Gaia hypothesis. His name is Lovejoy. He's still alive. He's like 98 years old over in England. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, having big blooms of this, it's a it's a, a feedback loop, which it'll cause the albedo of the Earth to change a little bit and clouds to form, which will reflect light back off. So the warmer we get, the more this will grow, and that's like it's like one of the things that. And this is a big picture project that I'm working on to get this at scales of the Pacific Ocean, yeah, or the Arctic Ocean. So who who's doing any like medicinals research? Do you know? Medicinals with algae? Yeah, I mean, like, there has to be so many novel medicinal compounds in, in all these different species. There's a bunch of them. Um, I don't know too much about that. Yeah. <coughs> Hendrickson might know a little bit about that because he's a little bit more on plays on, on that side of yeah, the nutrition. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. yeah. Um, Amha would know things. quite a bit about that. Amha Balai. Um, that's, that's where I, that's where my interest lies because, like, I want to do a lot of supplement formulation. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Yeah, and, like, honestly, I mean, that's probably what we're, we'll talk about later but like yeah there's a lot of potential there and especially if you're gonna be doing QC stuff it opens up a lot of more avenues into doing consumables Ex exactly and that's the thing that that's weird that's that's interesting about um, uh, uh, where oh <laughs> that's, that's the thing right now it's that the whole fresh spirulina world is completely cowboy there's no regulations. Why? Because they got it exactly. <laughs> they got it with uh, uh, because the pH is at ten. <laughs> if they're actually at pH ten, which they should be, mm -hmm. there are, there aren't going to be very many pathogens for humans, mm -hmm. right? So, but outside of that, it's just like yeah, it's a vegetable. FDA has called it grass, generally recognized as safe, so you can eat it. And but there's still there's so much more that you get in trouble for putting having having something that you make going into somebody that just. Yeah, it just makes me. Super yeah, there needs nervous. to be yeah. levels of. Uh, I mean, that, and that that also opens up an opportunity for a new industry, um, especially if more people are going to be doing this with regional uh, quality control laboratories. You know. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a whole job. That is, mm -hmm. and we're 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 looking into that right now because that's a safer place for us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're. Uh, I, yeah, it, it being being. I'll, I like taking risks, but I like being safe too. Yeah, so yeah. having a lab that's thing. Very understandable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, look at them little guys in there. Yeah, these are little brine shrimp here. So we're putting together a kit and trying to figure out um, a good way to use this is to demonstrate microplastic toxicity. Mm -hmm. So right now we've been using so many um, plastics and they're eventually everything's going to go down to the oceans as it breaks down and gets and turns into little bits of plastic. So um, and then in the oceans, anything that's really small is going to eat those plastics because they just eat anything that's small. Yeah. So they'll graze on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what we found is that you can basically take um, uh, acrylic powder, which for those of you who do your nails, I usually get, you know, I get the pedicure done on occasion, but uh -huh. I haven't done very much acrylic fills. But if you get this um, uh, this glow in the dark uh, acrylic powder and you get a little light here and you put it in the uh, in with the brine shrimp, um, you can see that the brine shrimp are literally eating the, the, um, the acrylic powder and they're bioconcentrating or bioaccumulating the, the plastic in their Whoa, GI. You so you that. can see it, it's their, right their in their GI. All crazy color. Here, come here, bring your camera in, check this they out. They got glowing poops. They got glowing poops. It's filled with acrylic. So, so knock, knock. Oh, acrylic turds. Knock, knock. Who's there? Brine shrimp. Brine shrimp who? Hey, he said it, he made me say it. <laughs> Jamie Butler's daughter made that joke. She's the Lorax for the Great Salt Lake. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so these guys are, you can see all the poops in the bottom there. So this is, um, it's brine shrimp poop, and they don't like the light. They're phototaxic as well. So right now they're trying to get away from the light. Um, so we're putting a kit together to try to demonstrate this for kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that way they're aware that what their behavior is and how they interact with plastics and with the environment is going to go into into the microbes That's so that are going to be into their food. Holy. So we're trying to come up with ways, and I love your opinions on this. We're trying to come up with ways to... I, I'm confident we can get this into the the, the um, into the uh, pedagogy of education, mm -hmm. but to really get it out there into the in front of the people is another one too that you guys are good at, at messaging. So mm -hmm. um, hey, this weird. is something that yeah, this is something that that, uh, uh, that I'm pretty passionate about, and I know that it's going to not only be really good for the environment to have kids see this oh, yeah. firsthand, but also we can make money on it, which is important too. Yeah. Is that
fucking 